super lucky right I'm muted hey hey Kat how's it going how you doing bud house tricks one second just doing the tweet so hi if you tuned in on YouTube this is the level of professionalism that you get from one of my streams you should uh, you should come on over <laughs> Good God. Okay, Twitch and then hashtag monster prom. And then hashtag. Yeah. Alright, tweet is. Out? Question mark. Tweet's out. Ah. You need to stop looking at Google Flights. Bye, where are you going? Going back to Japan? That says flights, right? Yes, it says flights. Let's do a full game. Ah, spooky high school. Yep, blah 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 blah. We've done this one. We are going to be this cute zombie boy. No way right now. Who are we really? We are Brian. And he's a he. <laughs> Okay, so who who are we setting our sights on today uh, for romance? I think that we should romance Damien because Damien seems pretty cute, and I'm on kind of like a devil kick at the minute because of the Met Gala last night. Huzzah! Says Miranda. Yeah! There's Damien. <laughs> Scott. <sighs> Liam. <sighs> Yay! And Polly. What? And Vera. I love Vera. We need to. We have to romance Vera before the end of stream today. You did see a really cheap flight from here to London around the time for Thought Bubble. Hey, Kurt, bud. You should have a Thought Bubble. Okay, blah, blah, bloop. Skip all this preamble. Oh, there is just a skip button. Which is the coolest mythological creature? This weird creature I drew when I was six and which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures, but it's super cool and it's my own OC and my spirit animal, okay? <gasps> Kirsty, Kirsty, this is a dating simulator where we get to date monsters and there's a snake lady who hates everybody and I love her so much and I want her to step on me, but then there's also a, a, a vampire guy who's a total hipster and I love him and, you know, I'd like to do smooches on him, but then I'm also trying to date a, a demon guy who's very cute, and then there's a werewolf guy who's adorable, and then there's a poltergeist girl who's a ghost and she loves parties, and I just love this game. Hi. <laughs> the invisible hand of the free market, a sphinx who's super turned up and ready to party, and she wraps all her riddles. She still kills you if you don't answer them correctly, but she wraps the riddles. These are such Susie problems. <laughs> Thought Bubble is towards the end of September this year. Victor, hello. Oh, hi, Charlie. Oh, hi, Tom. Um, we're trying to touch everybody's butts, but we re we're going after Damien first. Damien is the hot demon boy. But then also, I tried to romance Vera last week when I was super sick. So, and we failed. She rejected us, which... I understand, and it only made me more attracted to her. So we have to romance Vera. We gotta do it. Um. 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 I like the Sphinx, the turnt Sphinx. No, Jason, why? The coolest reality show would be. People in positions of power must face all sorts of questions relevant to their field, and if they fail, they lose their jobs, and society wins. Eight rich people fight in weekly challenges to see who's the best at giving money to you. I like that one. Last week I was super sick, but I'm always mad ill. <laughs> Somebody needs to make me a poly dating sim. <laughs> um... Twelve experts on the various arts of seduction live in a house where they must face a common challenge. Seducing a potato into marriage, somehow. <laughs> I like that one. 
Gross. What's the sexiest type of knowledge a lover can have? Lyrics to Walt Disney songs. Mm -hmm. Sports things. Eh. How to make a killer cocktail out of anything. Eh. How to set stuff on fire. Obscure 80s movie trivia. All the principles to build a financial empire. I mean, come on. But we're going after Damien, so he likes setting stuff on fire. He's a flamey boy. So let's do this one. Yeah, there he be. Yeah, Vera is a really tough one, um, but I want to switch um, so bad. Sure. Okay, where are we going, Brian? You are smartish, not very bold, not very creative, charming and funny though. So let's. Um... Hmm. Where would Damien be? Damien seems like a fun kind of guy, but that's like Polly as well. Um. Hmm. Damien is super cool, so he'll be hanging out in the bathroom, smoking, surely. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits but gain two boldness. After you're counting and recounting your money, hoping to find an extra dollar, when suddenly... Hey, bro. Oh, wait a minute. I've forgotten the voices. <laughs> hey, hey, Brian, look. Look here. Look what I have. Isn't it shiny? Scott holds aloft a roll of duct tape, which you concede is indeed shiny. Wait a minute. He was like, Metal Gear? But a bit more. Yeah. Listen, I'm not saying that we tied up Crazy Martin, the werebear janitor. I'm just saying, this tape is crazy strong, and if you wanted to wreak some havoc on the school, Crazy Martin might be a little, uh, tied up. Oh, these are Scottish, weren't they? <clears throat> <laughs> Why did I do this game last week when I was so ill? Wait a minute. Scotland. Scotland. Haggis. Celts. Loch. Thank the triple goddess. We spent months tracking that. Our thing? It's so cool, right? We have a thing, and it's our thing, and it's the best thing, and it's ours. You fools. That's the duct tape of retribution. It's the only adhesive that can hold Balthazar the Destroyer, whom we must detain in order to save the world. This accent is bad. All my accents are bad. Who am I kidding? Oh, oh, uh, well, uh, saving the world is good, yeah? I, I just liked it because it were, was a cool shiny thing. You can, you can have it. No, wait, Scott! They're probably just making that shit up because they want to take the cool thing from us. Balthazar the Destroyer? Obviously fake. Why have I never heard of him? <laughs> I'm dying already. Let me just... <clears> oh, hi, the new Scotland. <clears throat> We had a three hour le long lecture on Balthazar the Destroyer in homeroom yesterday. Uh, you wrote Damien, they, uh, they must be lying. I think we would have remembered that. You were at sports practice and Damien was asleep at his desk. After we heard about the threat Balthazar, that Balthazar posed, we took it upon ourselves to journey deep into the dungeons of Holy Smart to bring back the holy duct tape of retribution, only to discover it already gone. Oh, the dungeon only more. That is where we were. We took a wrong turn on our way to English curses and got totally lost. Somehow we were in uh, some kind of maze. Anyway, we saw that sick tape and thought we might as well take it. And now it's fucking ours and you can't have it. Ugh, could you be any more oblivious? Hand over the tape or we'll be forced to use force to take it by... uh force. Yikes. Looks like this situation is getting out of control. You better step in before some- ah! Oh shit, Stevie, what up? With that 11 month sub, thank you so much. Can I get some hearts and some love for Stevie in the chat, please? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Looks like this situation is getting out of control. You'd better step in before someone or some duct tape gets hurt. 
Don't worry, Damien, you can keep the duct tape of retribution for your nefarious purposes. Coven, why don't you just use a scotch tape of hay, cut that out instead? Scott, you don't really care about the duct tape, right? You just like having a cool shiny thing, but watch me use my sweet negotiation skills to get, wait for it, two cool shiny things. Nah, this one. The scotch tape of hey, cut that out. There's no such thing. I mean, I know there are rumors of such artifact hidden away at the bottom of the depths of the dimness Theraband Sea. <laughs> oh shit, the dimness Theraband Sea? Scott. Isn't that where we accidentally ended up doing vodka shots the other day between classes? Damn. Sure is hard to find the English class in this school. Uh, uh, no, Damien. That's uh, where you did vodka shots. I was being a good boy, but I did fetch this. After a bit of searching, Scott withdraws a wonderful glimmering roll of scotch tape. What? How? Give that to us right now! No! I'll fetch you for myself, fair and square. You were trying to cheat right now. Why else would it be called scotch tape? To start with, we're not trying to do anything. We're about to succeed at getting back the magic artifacts that should rightfully be ours. Yo, no one counts for my friend or his tape. You want to dance? Let's go. The room is suddenly on fire. It seems like this whole showdown could have been avoided if Damien and Scott just downloaded a map on their phones. They really do get lost and stumble on tape-themed magic artifacts an inordinate number of times. But since that isn't an option, you're forced to watch as the coven steals both tape artifacts and disappears with a flourish. Oh, Nah, no, I don't have the thing anymore. And I don't have my thing anymore either. Thanks to fucking Brian's genius choice to just start offering to give away other people's things. What? You've taken a break from JoJo's Adventure Part Souls to smooch some monsters, yeah! Other than though, holy shit, that fucking, um, that mod looks so cool. I want a punch ghost. I'm gonna have to download it. You start to explain that you genuinely, totally, completely thought you were making that up and that you had no way of knowing that there was actually a scotch tape of hey, cut that out. But it doesn't matter. Damien and Scott are way over your artifact giving away ass. You lose two fun and one boldness, but Damien liked us. Did you see that? I saw that. I saw that heart. I saw that Kokoro. Um, sure. Okay, where is he? Why did I pick this guy first? He has the, the worst voice for my throat. You find Damien and Vera contemplating a huge slab of unidentifiable prime meat. All right, Damien, I know we had our share of disagreements during this convoluted poaching expedition. Like when you told me not to bring all my knives? But I trust we can now put our differences behind us and enjoy the fruits of our labors. You mean the meats of our labors? Yes. Together we will enjoy this raw and bloody cut of meat as a symbol of our... Wait. Raw and bloody? You mean you're not even gonna try using fire on it? Of course I used fire. I specifically instructed the chef to prepare this meat while glancing briefly at a lit stove. Did the fire ever, you know, touch the meat? What would be the point of that? A cut this fine can only be eaten ultra raw. Like hell it can. You wait here while I get my culinary flamethrower. Damien, please, let's be reasonable about this. <laughs> what is... reasonable? If we can't come to an agreement, let's appeal to an arbitrary third party. Brian will surely make the intelligent choice for us, isn't that right? My word, the steak is too cooked already. Rub some ice on it and douse it in blood, quick. Um, your voice of Vera really works for you. Well, that's good to know. Thanks, Victor. <laughs> um, is Damien Snake from the West Country? No. Uh, so Damien likes his steak well done, apparently. Deal breaker. Not deal breaker. I don't mind well done steak. I mean, I prefer medium, but well done's not 
intolerable unless it's leather and then I'm like Ugh. okay so my word the steak is too cooked already rip some ice on it and douse it in blood quick the only correct way to enjoy a steak is after its charred remains have been retrieved from a burning building Damien would like this one so this is the one we shall choose that's what I like to hear that and the sounds of screaming people fleeing a burning building but roasting totally destroys the flavor. Done talking! Fire time now! As you flee screaming from the burning building, you find Damien right beside you. He takes your hand and smiles. Steak should be served at a point where a talented vet can get it back. It almost makes the third degree burns and massive property damage worth it. I will smooch Vera. I swear to God, I'm going to smooch Vera, though. I have to, um, y'all. Sure. I gotta. I just gotta. Okay, we have five dollar do, so let's go see what's in the shop. Give me your money. Hey, last time I read this article on how money causes pocket cancer in the long run, you don't want to get pocket cancer. Quick, give me that dangerous money you have in your still healthy pockets. Okay, so we've done this one. We've done this one. We are too poor for that. Um, a fake badass tattoo. Sexy fake Latin accent. So this is definitely for like Liam. This is for Polly. I think this is a Damien thing. Let's get this. Later, Gator. Yeah, who would want to save money for their college fund when you can spend it on weird stuff that's most likely useless? That's the spirit champ. We got a sick fake tattoo. Dope. Um, okay. Sure. So where are we going this time? Um, I think we should go outdoors and have some fun, because Damien likes fun. We saw a rave. Um, big rave. We've done this one. Demons. Later, you, Polly, and Damien are practicing batting, which is stealing bats and hiding them in people's lockers. But all that well-intentioned fun and games is interrupted by a blinding flash of light. We're here to save the day! There you are. Exactly the monsters we wanted to see. Well, needed, not wanted. Ah, uh, these guys again? They never want to do anything fun. We're not trying to ruin your fun. We're just trying to save your world. Univertica is planning an attack. Ugh. Ugh, so boring. Ugh. Why am I even subjecting my ears to this bullshit? I'm going back to hell. Yeah, that's what we need. Our partner on this mission, Rabaru, died right after discovering Univertica's weakness. We need someone to speak to her spirit. Not it. Not it. Damn it. I said it almost at the same time. Thanks for the host! But I'm allergic to helping. This is a serious health issue. But I'm prettier, so I shouldn't have to do anything ever. Guys, seriously, the world will end if you don't help us. We don't care who, but one of you needs to step up. Whatever, just let the world end already, then I won't have to take my midterms. I'm with Polly on this one. Midterms suck. Helping people sucks. Good luck with whatever you said your problem was. Well, the problem is the world ending. You're pretty sure nobody wants that. But you don't really want to help either. Time to impress one of your classmates by forcing the other one to help. What's the matter, Damien? Are you scared? Are you a spicy little red baby? <laughs> You're welcome, Polly. You know, Polly, saving the world is a great way to get free drugs and alcohol. Yo, Damien, you owe me one. <laughs> this spicy little red baby. <laughs> but we'll do this bomb one. <laughs> free drugs and alcohol? I guess I could help you out, but I'm not wasting my whole day on this. How is this a waste of a day? 
The world will otherwise end. What is wrong with you people? Polly bounces off to commune with the spirits. The coven exchange cautiously optimistic glances. Yeah. Thank you for that follow, 118 Mojo. Yeah. Good job cynically manipulating Polly's desires so I didn't have to go. You're going to hell for sure. You aim to please. After a moment, Polly returns. Rabaru is the bomb.com. We totally had an impromptu on that dance party in the spirit world and it was wicked. That's great, I guess, but did you learn Univetica's weakness? Oh yeah, duh, it's penicillin. He's highly allergic. Penicillin, of course, we, we, we should have known. Great, cool, awesome. Now scram before I summon like 20 more demons to replace the one you're fighting. I truly do not understand how you can be so unconcerned about the fate of the world. You're all bad people, seriously. The coven disappears, leaving you, Polly, and Damien to not give any kind of fucks about the universe, just the way you like it. You gain two boldness and one fun. Um, sure. You arrive at your chosen table to find Damien dejectedly hefting, dejectedly hefting a ball of mashed potatoes, while Polly sadly passes her hand through the same. Oh. Seriously, what do we have to do to get a food fight started in this cafeteria? I honestly do not know. I tried throwing potatoes at people and yelling food fight, but I think everyone is too scared of me to fight back. And I can't throw any food because of my stupid ghost hands. Plates, mirrors, antique furniture, sure, but not food. There's gotta be a way to provoke a food war. My dads are always telling me to be more political. Oh, Damien's got gay dads! Well, we're not political. Your strength is hitting things, and my strength is being unbelievably hot all the time. Unbelievably hot? That's it. We'll set the cafeteria on fire. Wait. No. That's not a solution. That's just arson. Why do I always jump straight to arson? It's hard to watch them struggle through this by themselves, so you step in with an idea of your own. Wars are fought over scarce resources. Steal everybody's food and put it in a pile. That ought to do it. Hey Polly, you know how the Greeks fought a whole war over Helen of Troy's face? Flash the cafeteria. <laughs> Let's go with the top one, hey? Whoa, is that what politics is? Beating people up and putting their stuff in a big pile? I didn't know I, didn't know I was already so good at politics. And then I can roll around in the food pile. It'll feel so good in my non-skin. Damien spends the rest of lunch piling up everybody's food in an enormous food mountain. Hungry students are soon swarming the mountain, trying to grab what they can while Damien pelts them with fire and knives from above. <laughs> in a panic, the students turn on each other, fighting with the only weapon they have, the food in their hands. <laughs> food fight! Food fight! I think a fight like this is how I died! The casualties are beyond counting, but no one will be forgetting that food fight anytime soon. <laughs> what is this um, game? Sure. Just just what is this game? Um, okay. So boldness. Need to hang out in the bathrooms again. Wow, this is just like politics. If you think arson isn't the answer, you aren't building a big enough fire. <laughs> Okay, that day we skipped class. Uh, but we encounter three wild hyenas on the way there. Who the fuck runs security here? Do you know? That's a very good question. Anyway, you subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and the idiotic scenarios they prepared you for. By the time you get to the bathrooms, you've totally gained two boldness. We're so bold, you guys. You're hanging out with two of the baddest asses you know, genuinely being bad and asses, when suddenly... 
My response is for getting Damien tonight are on fire. I see what you did there. Ah. A masked villain bursts in and threatens you. I have been waiting a long time for this confrontation, he says. Following you, hunting you, waiting for the perfect moment, and now prepare to meet your doom and pay for all that you've done to me. Ah! Holy shit! I've never done anything wrong to anyone ever! I have no idea who this could be. I've done so many things wrong to so many people. I have no idea which one you could be. Wonder no more, says the masked villain and rips his mask off. Oh my god, of course, it's that guy. The one from, you, you know, I, I mean, you, you totally know this guy, right? Damien. Never seen this dude before. You must have beef with Brian. I have beef with all of you tiny fools. It is I, Univertica Jr. Oh, of course, Univertica Jr. No clue. You collaborated with your three best friends to destroy my father. Scott, Vera, and Miranda? No way, he means Liam, Coach, and Alfred. I mean Faith, Hope, and Joy. I have no idea who the fuck those people are. Yeah, literally never heard of them. Puny mortals, they are classmates of yours who formed a coven. Oh, the coven? They have names? Yeah, I uh, definitely always think of them as pretty much one entity. Oh yeah, right. That one time they made us talk to their dead friend Rabaru to get the secret to killing some lame villain, and it turned out he was allergic to penicillin, right? What was that dude's name? Univertica, and I am Univertica Junior, and now you will pay. Seems like you've really pissed this bad guy off. Luckily, you watch fiction. You know how this shit goes down. Thinking quickly, you. Take this opportunity to reveal your real plan. You were only befriending the coven to betray them. Wahahaha. <laughs> Recognize the symbol on his armor as that of your father? <gasps> You and Univertica Junior are siblings. Um, it's gotta be this one, right? It's gotta be the top one. That's that's the play here, right? Right. This is a tricky one. <laughs> Excuse me. I always forget how tough these streams are in my throat. <sighs> how could they not name in Junior Vertica? They missed a trick is how. I'm gonna go with the top one. Just befriending the coven to betray them, huh? Oh, sorry. Just befriending the coven to betray them, huh? Junior Vertica Junior chuckles. A likely story. That's what they all say. Quick, if you're really not best friends with the coven, what's their favorite color? Black. Duh. Wrong. It was a trick question. Faith's favorite color is green. Joy's favorite color is purple. And Hope's favorite color is blue. They're individuals, people. How hard is that to grasp? I know, man. The, uh, really do just read as one person to me. One person I can't wait to help Brian betray, obviously. I knew it. I knew you were in league with the enemy. You were far too desperate to get in on our plan. Um, as far as you can recall, you desperately tried to avoid helping them. And we're too eager to help. And now we find you in league with Univertica Junior? Prepared to be attacked? Oh wow, they really are Scottish. The coven begins re readying themselves for a magical attack. Univertica Junior cackles maniacally. You think I will believe this paltry display? This fight is clearly staged, so I will believe Brian is not in league with the coven. Prepare to be attacked! At this point, Univertica Junior draws his sword and begins attacking you as you dodge spells and hexes from the coven. Polly and Damien, being the great friends they are, cackle hysterically as you're attacked from all sides, and then bolt. 
You survive, ultimately, when all four of them are distracted by the sound of the ice cream wizard truck. Turns out people on all sides are of the fight of good versus evil like frozen treats. They also like beating you up and embarrassing you in front of your friends and making you lose two smarts and one boldness. Damn it! We hacked up. Um, sure. Um, sure. Okay, let's go and, um, be charming and play some sports. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit. Leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader. You gain two charm. Which I'm as fuck, yo. You see Damien about to punch some noob when suddenly a dimensional portal, op portal opens between the two of them. Yo! Oh no, it's this guy. I forgot what his voice was. Hey! What the hell? I was just about to punch that noob! Oh no, he was like a game show host, right? There will be plenty of noobs to punch, my fears and paramour, when you are mine. Hmm? What? I have traveled across time and space to find a fit commander for my armies and for my bedroom. Oh, you want me to come over to your kingdom so we can kill people and fuck? I wouldn't put it quite so crassly. <laughs> Fucking metal! Well, I would, and that sounds doper than hell, which isn't hard because hell is lame, but still. And, but if Damien goes to another dimension to fuck and kill people, how will he fuck and kill people with you? There's only one thing to do. Defeat the prince's entire shitty army using nothing but a colander and a grapefruit. Show Damien a picture of the prince's armies wearing clown shoes and assless chaps. I don't even know who Bob Barker is. <laughs> um. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I feel Damien would, would get into that. Me defeating an entire army. Um, yeah, let's go with this one. Armed with your trusty colander helm and furious grapefruit, you charge through the rift. The prince's army turns out to just be to be just three dudes, and one of those dudes is just two toddlers in a trench coat. You strain the shit out of them, squeeze grapefruit juice into their wounds, and toss what's left into a volcano. And what's more, you live stream the entire thing for Damien to watch back home. When you get back, he's applauding. Rad! Holy shit! That was wicked. I've never seen someone be so gratuitous with a grapefruit. Screw this interdimensional a-hole. I want you to teach me about using limes as an offensive weapon. The prince slinks back to his kingdom to recruit a new shitty army, while you teach Damien the mysteries of citrus foo. You gain two charm and one boldness. Yeah! Boo -boo -boo! We fucked those toddlers up with a colander and a grapefruit. Get um, in the volcano, sure. you little shits. Okay. Oh god. I'm trashing everything. You find Damien and Vera hunched over a scale model of Spooky National Bank, made of milk cartons, lunch trays, and ketchup packets. Alright, we'll go in through the side entrance, disable the alarms with an EMP, and blow the safe. Why don't we just blow up the side entrance, blow up the alarms, and blow up the safe? Because we only have so much C4, Damien. That sounds like a personal problem. What's this thing? Damien points at a kosher dill pickle in front of the vault labeled Police Ogre. That's the Police Ogre. He's got eyes all the way around his head, never sleeps, doesn't take bribes, and is invincible in combat. Can we blow him up? No, we can't blow him up. We need to find a way around him. Well... I'm out of ideas. Yo, Brian, we'll cut you in on the heist if you can solve this ogre problems for us. I put a plural in there for some reason. Luckily, you're a heist mastermind. Before Vera or Damien can react, you... Rub the bank yourself and split the money with Vera. Eat the pickle. Well, obviously, we eat the pickle. 
Okay, let's eat the pickle. Quick as a flash, you snatch the pickle off the table and bite it in half. Yeah, success! Suck it, ogre. That doesn't actually solve the... Look, Vera, now the path to the vault is clear. We can blow it open and walk out with the cash. Excuse me one second. Eat Damien's pickle, lewd. Sorry, da that Damien voice really makes my throat tickly. But the ogre is still there. The map doesn't lie, Vera. I see no ogre. Fine. Why don't you do just rob the bank then? I'll focus on my illegal drug trade. You're happy to share a romantic heist with Damien. Together, you eat the actual ogre just like you ate the pickle. And everyone throws police. Everyone knows police ogres are the ultimate aphrodisiac. <gasps> oh! 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 Brown chicken, brown, brown, brown chicken, um, brown cow. Sure. Get it, boys? Okay, uh, let's go be more bold in the bathrooms. Uh, we hang out. You don't stop there. You want the world to know how reckless you are for the rest of eternity. So you do some graffiti on the wall. No way. The graffiti says, I'm bold as fuck. And you know what? It turns out the wall is a magical wall that grants wishes. What a wall! A deep voice resounds from within the wall and says, well, not bold as fuck, but maybe a bit bold. And then you gain two boldness. <clears throat> Oh boy, that's an opinionated wall. Anyway, lucky you. You see Damien beating the piss out of a goblin, like he always does when he's depressed. You go over and ask him what's up. It's this whole heir to the throne of hell thing. It's really bumming me out. I hate being a prince of hell. I'm gonna hate being a king of hell even more. Hmm. I mean... How am I supposed to rebel against authority when I am the authority? Ugh, not even being the piss out of this goblin is cheering me up. Damien continues to beat the piss out of the goblin, but his heart clearly isn't in it. I mean, is there anything rad I can do as king of hell? Literally anything? <coughs> You're forgetting about the ultimate way to fight authority. Total war. Kings of harems. And I definitely join yours. Oh! 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 I mean, that's that's the line, right? That's the line. That's the... Hey, boy. That's the line. But Damien likes fighting. I feel, I feel like I get a kick out of Total War. But this this is a really tough one! And you can't even save Scum it. I might have to just like roll a dice on this one. I'm gonna do that. Let me get my dice out. I'm going to use this fluorescent pink dice. It's very, very pink. True. Think of my stats. But my stats are pretty good for these, though. For all of these. Um. It's the first one. This is what I rolled. But that's bold as shit. I got. I got to go with this one. You had me at harem, <laughs> but then you lost me at. I joined yours. You think I need to become king in order to degrade my dick with the likes of you? Nah. Listen, the reason we're not fucking right now is because I don't want to fuck you. Cause you're ugly. Go get a wife. <laughs> now sliver away before I stop being polite. 
You slither away. You lose two boldness and one charm. That's fine. It's only week four. It's fine. Um, sure. We need to go be bold again. We need to get some boldness back. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, on the way there, we run into Mamimi, the, o the Oni girl. She offers you some of her weird Japanese energy drink. <clears throat> you take a sip. It tastes crazy as hell. You need to check the contents of this shit. Guarana seed extract, benzoic, benzoic, uh, benzoic acid, 50 milligrams of caffeine, and 100 milligrams of boldness? Well, if it wasn't bad at all, you gain two boldness. Thank Mamimi and proceed to the bathrooms. As you enter the bathroom, you notice that there's something a little different about it. Specifically, the different thing is that is on fire. Aw oh man, can you believe it? The bathroom just randomly caught fire for no reason. On the wall, you notice graffiti reading, Scott is more swole than Damien 5 ever. But surely this is unrelated. Shit, dude, I can't get detention again. I have an urgent appointment with someone, and by that I mean... My fists have an urgent appointment with their face. And if a fist can't make that appointment... Damien cracks his knuckles. Better think of a way to save him. Call Scott and have him pee it out. If there's one thing we know about Scott, is that he loves to pee on things. If you burn down the whole school, no one will be worrying about one little bathroom. This is obviously the Damien, Damien choice. So you're saying I should fight fire with a fire? It's so simple. Anytime I have a problem, all I have to do is set it on fire. <coughs> no, no, you don't. But if that fire causes any problems, then I can just set those problems on fire. It works in every situation. I can't believe I never thought of this before. Damien doesn't even get around to setting the whole school on fire. He's too busy writing his new self-help book. Self -help book. Fighting fire with fire, a foolproof guide to inevitable success in all situations. It sells a million copies. Damien shares the profits with you. You gain three money. Cool? <laughs> um, sure. Okay, where is he? Oh, God. Who is this? You find Scott and Damien immersed in their favorite mobile game, Pokemon's Go, based on the classic Pocket Humans. <laughs> My Reginald Bosworth uses income tax audit. Oh no, Ma Lindsay Roberts never saves receipts. He's super effective. <laughs> and now for the finishing blow. Wait, the what? Reginald contracted lymphoma? Reginald's lymphoma deals 500 physical damage to him and 999 emotional damage to him and his loved ones. Woo! I'll win again! Why are your Pokemon so unhealthy, Damien? Because I make them all smoke cigarettes and live next to toxic waste dumps, obviously. Oh, uh, maybe you should stop that. Where's the fun in that? Let's have another match. Oh no, what voice did I give this guy? Oh, I remember it now. What are you two nerds doing? Nerding around? Nerd up, nerds. Wow, Scott, is that you? We didn't recognize you under all that nerdery. What are you doing playing a dumb video game for stupid babies? But my, my Pokemon isn't dumb. It's cool, cause, cause, no way Scott gonna come up with, no way Scott gonna come up with anything. But if you do, maybe you can score some points with Scott or Damien. Hey, thanks for that host, Grey Fox! Show them that a phone equipped with Pokemon's Go can also be used as a football. Say nothing. Pelt them with steamed vegetables. Hmm. Oh, look at his little face! Hmm. Excuse me, I'm a bit burpy today. Um, 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 um. I did this one. Uh! Oh no, wait a minute. Ugh, vegetables! We hate those! Stop it! Seriously!
seriously, Pella's with ground beef or something. Or at least some snossages or pig's ears. How about some forks and knives? Or some knives and knives. I'm just gonna keep throwing knives. <coughs> yeah, these knives are whoa. <clears throat> whoa. Uh, these knives are almost as bad as the vegetables. Guys, guys, come on. Stop throwing carrots and knives at my cousins. You stop, alright? As soon as the wolf pack have retreated out of range. Nice thinking. Finally, I use vegetables. Am I right? Damien barely remembers to take the knife out of his hand before high-fiving you. He does, though, so that's a win. Scott's not terrible. Scott's really sweet. Um, he's a he's sure. a puppy, like literally a puppy. He's adorable. Um, let's let's go be bold again. We need to up this boldness. That day we skipped class, and in the bathroom, you tell yourself in the mirror that you're so bold you would kill a tiny, big-eyed turtle with your bare hands. Why? That monstrous act would instantly give you plus five hundred boldness. But come on, you're just talking to yourself in the mirror. What's the merit in that? You know what? You can keep two boldness anyway for saying that to yourself out loud. You're chilling in the bathroom with Damien and Miranda. Thank the gods for co-ed bathrooms. Everything's going great and you're obviously very cool until you hear some noises. I've decided I'm going to give Miranda a French accent because she's royalty and she seems very bougie. So, you know, she's going to be like... But still very high-pitched. Uh, oh snap, it's Crazy Martin, the werebear janitor. Damn, we're done. If I get caught skipping class again, they're going to feed me to the school's dragon. Or even worse, they'll make me come in on a Saturday. <gasps> <coughs> uh, this is bad, and I didn't bring my champion who would fight to the death to defend my honor. What can we do? It seems they're both waiting for you to do something. But how do you scare a werebear? No time to think, you bust out of the stall and... Make yourself as big as possible. It's showtime. Play dead until he goes away. This is very bold. You puff out your cheeks, stuff a bunch of toilet paper in your shirt, and wave your arms in the air. Crazy Martin has no idea what the hell is happening. He thinks he's having a flashback to Nam. Oof. As Martin flees the bathroom, Damien puts a hand on your shoulder. That was stupid as hell, but you sure scared him to death. Stupidity, p stupidity puts bravery. <laughs> stupidity plus bravery is my favorite mix. You're rad. Wait, oui, that was superb. For a moment, you scared me too. So convincing. You're my knight in shining armor. Defeating a white bear with nothing more than toilet paper. That's something to remember. You gain plus two boldness and one creativity. Um, sure. <laughs> oh my, we got like, let's, let's cap, let's get, let's get this boldness up. Let's get it up. Hey, stranger. Oh, it's the shop. Shit. Um, we have three money. Oh, I'm not buying the tampon. I'm not helping Vera this time. Goodbye. Uh. I should have checked to see where the shop was and not wasted a day, but hey. Um, sure. Okay. Oh, I just remembered what accent the tiger has. <laughs> you find Scott and Damien shoveling hot dogs and mashed potatoes into their mouths while Coach cheers them on. Always believe in yourself. Go, boys, go it. Go. Munch your way to victory. Ah, oh, there's no truer sport than an eating contest. This good. Sure, it's a relief. Looks like it's pretty fair fight so far, but where's the fun in that? Time to step in and tip the balance. <laughs> Distract Scott with surprise fireworks. Slather Damien's dogs in holy ketchup. Got us distract Scott with fireworks. What the hell? What the hell? You were planning on setting off those fireworks in here anyway. You let him rip. Whoa. Oh, hey, 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 stop that. Who did that? Who's making noise? I'm yelling because I'm scared. They found us. Now wait a minute. 
<clears throat> oh no, I've, I've lost the voice. Cheers, love. They found a squat. The Viet Cong. Oh, Lord, it is Nam all over again. That was not that voice. Scott and Coach flee the cafeteria. Damien lets out a sigh full of equal parts relief and mashed potatoes. What? I don't know what just happened. Holy shit. Uh, thanks. I was just eating like I normally do when these two idiots came over and turned it into a sport. Gah! It's not my fault I eat so fast. I've got a literal furnace in my stomach. Damien lets you have some of his half-chewed hot dogs. Nice. Some would say that's almost like making out with him. There is a lot of Nam flashbacks in this run, you're right. Um, sure. Excuse me. Good God. That day, you visit the bathrooms to take a number two. Don't worry, there won't be an illustration of that specific moment. Thing is, you make one of the boldest decisions in your life. You don't put paper on the toilet seat before using it. Look at you, you crazy bastard. You gain plus two boldness and probably one staphylococcus with a slight chance of one STD. You're minding your own business when Damien comes rushing through, punching everyone who's minding their own business. Yeah! Fuck! I'm so angry. I'm so angry I want to pull my own skull out and eat it. <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> Sorry, that just... Thank you for that host, Allison. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm committed to doing this. It's not necessarily the voice. It's because it's right at the back of my throat and it like makes a vibrate and it just tickles my throat, which makes me cough. Can't even believe putting down toilet paper like that is common enough to have it referenced. Yeah, people do that a lot. I'm so angry. I want to set the school on fire and then punch the fire in its fucking face. I'm so angry, I want to spend years accumulating political capital so I can become president and use my nuclear codes to blow up the sun. <coughs> and you, you're standing in my way. Move before I punch you so hard you'll remember with melancholy the times when you could move it without all your bones hurting. <coughs> oh my god. Oh no, violence incoming! Think fast! Joke's on you, pal. I'm a pragmatist. I avoid any kind of idealization of the past because it has no use, and therefore I refuse feeling any kind of melancholy. No time to think of anything clever. Start dancing for no reason. Stay on target, we can do this! I feel like just randomly dancing at him is very bold. This is a bit smart for him. He'll probably punch me for being a smart ass. You have no idea what to do, so you just start doing a silly dance. It's really, really silly indeed. Before you realize, all your classmates have joined you in your silly little dance. Oh, this is gonna piss him off. What the fuck? Move or I will kill you dead, noob. <clears throat> but Damien, you can't deny he is actually moving. Yeah, and quite the moves he has. <laughs> Clearly even Damien can't fight against logic. Oh! Maybe you should move, Damien. Don't be a loser. Yeah, as you just said. Here, you move or you die. All your classmates start chanting, Move or die! Move or die! Hey, Lynette! Ugh. Damien, frustrated by the crazy, mindless, but joyful new mob you've created, finally leaves. Still, from afar, you can see an eternal fire burning in the back of his eyes. But for now, you gain two boldness and one fun. I think that was the right option. <clears throat> um, sure. Oh shit, we're bold as fuck, y'all. Okay, um, um, um. What do we want to do? I think we should go have some fun. What's up? It's the shop again. I should have fucking knocked. Oh. God damn it. <clears throat> God damn it.
Um, okay. Sure. He's with Scott. Ooh, he's got a hot dog. What are you doing? You mess with me and then you try to sit at my table? Go away and get ready to die, fuckhead. <coughs> you just sit in the corner in silence. Will you die soon? Who knows? Meanwhile, nothing else happens. Oh, no! And if you think this is unfair, next time don't try to sit at the table of the person who has expressed his desire to murder you. Totally not a smart move. Oh, no! <laughs> Um, sure. Oh no! No, I've ruined it! Let's go, go charming. A day an epic dodgeball match takes place, but the match isn't as important as the human interactions within it. You're at your peak when you decide to go for the overkill and wink at one of your teammates. He's totally mesmerized. It's the most epic wink ever! Damn, you know how to win over people's hearts. You gain two charm. Despite everything else happening around you, you're just solving some Sudokus. But your mind is constantly going back to Damien. Stupid sexy Damien and his idiotic short temper. You think he could even be a sweetheart, but he seems more fo focused on being angry 24-7. For God's sake, he's the kind of guy that could get angry at a banana. As a matter of fact, your daydreaming is interrupted by the feral screams of Damien, who seems to be insulting an actual banana. Ugh, you stupid yellow fruit! What's your deal? Do you think you're richer in potassium than me? No one is richer in potassium than Damien fucking LaVey. Gah! Gah! Is he even for real? Stupid sexy Damien. No, you need to put a stop to this nonsense before it escalates somehow into arson. Defend the banana's honor. Eat the banana. Eat the banana. You get closer to Damien in a very cool and quiet way. Huh? Why don't you mind your business, noob? But you don't mind your business. You eat that banana instead. What? Ah! Oh, look at Damien. He's losing his shit again. Yeah, he was bullying that banana, but it seems he's all bark and no bite. Not like Brian, huh? Indeed, Brian seems to be all bite for sure. Kind of sexy. It is alluring, being all bite, not the bullying. Bullying is never alluring, nor sexy. True that. Unless you're bullying a banana. I mean, who cares? That's just stupid. Damien is stupid. Oh, fuck. Hashtag winners don't bully bananas. They just eat them. Hashtag Damien is a stupid banana bully. Ugh, not again. This is it. This is the last time you dare fuck with me, you bastard. On prom night, we're going to share a very special dance. Spoiler alert, it will hurt. Ooh, that's a prom fight on prom night. Damien versus Brian. Instant classic. Interesting. I might attend. Damn right. You all have tickets to watch how I reduce Brian's bones into a sad, shapeless pulp. Yes! Free tickets. Hashtag prom fight on prom night. And so you've led yourself to your own potential death. Nice. At least you gain three boldness for doing so of your own volition. <coughs> I'm gonna ask you to prom. He's gonna tell me to fuck off. Yo! Um, sure. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom? With you? Stupid fuck. I need spice in my life. And if you were a spice, you would be, um, <laughs> some fucking blind spice. Uh, you fucking suck. Damn, you're bad at interacting with people. To repent for the sin of making such bad choices, you were forced to walk around the school in the nude, accompanied by a nun who chanted shame over and over while ringing a big bell. Classic. No, why are we so bad at this game? Well, 
Yep. Blah, 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 blah. Damien found peace in the most unexpected way. He kept punching everything till one day he punched his own anger to death. He's written a book about it. Uh, blah, 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 Scott, Polly, blah, 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 blah. I was promised a prom fight. Son of a fuck. That went well. I have only managed to get one date so far, and that is with Scott, and that's because he's just a sweet idiot puppy boy. Dang it. All right, I am going to take a quick, quick break to just refill my water, and then we'll come back and we'll try to romance Miranda, because I think she's cute, and I would like to smooch her. So I will be back in a second. Don't go anywhere. I'm back, sweet babies, what up? Okay. We're gonna romance Miranda. Ah, spooky school. Um... Who, who's gonna romance the, the, the mermaid girl? I mean, thematically, fire and, and water, you know, that's cool, opposites attract and all that. So I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> Let's start a fire! <clears throat> so, the personality quiz. Welcome to the Monster Problem, stupidest pop quiz ever! You build a hundred foot statue commemorating an event so that in 1,000 years, archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? <clears throat> that mind-blowing twist in your favourite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever and like all that boring stuff they show in the news. Your least favorite political figure. 
being devoured by rabid rhinoceri, which are also covered in badass tattoos. That glorious instant when your friend stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Um... This one... <clears throat> be a visionary. What will the next big social media craze be? <clears throat> Excuse me. Bullshit. It's Facebook, but each time someone shares news that isn't supported by real facts, they're taxed, and the money goes to the people exposed to that bullshit. Oh! Greek agoras. <clears throat> like, literal Greek agoras reinstated in our- Oh, shit, what's this? That's a donation! Ah! <clears throat> let me, let me, let me see the thing. Pink Mercy? Oh, thank you so much for that donation. I will absolutely get Pink Mercy with that donation. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Anonymous. <clears throat> um, literal Greek agoras reinstated in our cities. Places where philosophy and arts are discussed by the greater minds. That's social media I want to log into. Arbert, from now on, socially, socially awkward named guy uh, so, bleh, I will start that again from now on a socially awkward guy named Robert will do everything he's commanded to through the app by its users I like yeah I like this one I like this one it's creative and smart I don't know what uh, what sort of personality that Miranda's after though she's a tough one what would be a dream first date a lovely walk in the forest after rescuing your date from a dragon. A wild party in international waters. Crimes. A sweaty and manly wrestling match. A professional meeting where you charm your date with some astonishing business advice. An art exhibition experimental enough to give you a seizure. That's Liam. That's Vera. That's Scott. That's Polly. Damien. Ah, uh, this has got to be Miranda. It was! But ah! Uh... Let's do this! Okay. <clears throat> I, th I think Miranda will appreciate charm. She's like a princess, right? Let's do charm. Let's get, let's get some charm. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but we use her speech. Spectacular comeback. N natural bond leader, clearly. <clears throat> charm. She a princess girl! Charm and creativity. But being smart helps too, I figured so. <clears throat> you see Liam talking to Miranda. Miranda looks confused and Liam looks frustrated. Uh oh. Ugh, yuck. But I simply do not understand this art that you are describing. You say that the art piece is a bathroom? <clears throat> no, no, no. For the hundredth time, the art piece is the experience of going to, into a bathroom. It's thinking it's an art piece. The artist purposefully gives the room number of the bathroom, gives the room number of the bathroom as the room number for the exhibit. Exhibit. Even though there was a whole room full of his paintings elsewhere in the building, it was revolutionary. It certainly seems very complicated. Personally, I prefer the exoplanet sculptures of the Atlantean Fifth Dynasty. You know, the man on the moon, the face on Mars, uh, all of Pluto, out on such a grand scale. Bah. <clears throat> bah. That's not art. That's populism at its first. Well, I don't think that bathroom business sounds like art. But how are we supposed to discuss art if we can't even agree on what it is? Ah, oh, if only someone would come along and provide a satisfying definition of art, I would be so pleased. You got this, no problem. It's so simple. Art is a method for making worthless things into very expensive things. Art isn't art unless it makes you feel bad feelings inside. That's Liam. This is, this is her. Oh, how true. Mars was just a bunch of sparsely populated red rock before Giblet Cranston completed his masterpiece. After that, he was able to sell it to the Arcturians for a trillion doubloons. The Martians weren't happy about it, but you know what they say. Sometimes we must suffer for other people's art. 
That last bit is the only part of what you're saying that I agree with. So that's what happened to life on Mars. You gained some new knowledge about the solar system and also two smarts and one charm. <clears throat> How the fuck is the moon populist, you stupid vampire? Let's hey, do this. don't back on my vampire husband. <clears throat> You arrive at Scott and Miranda's table to find Scott happily chowing down while Miranda stares horrified at her tray. Oh, uh, what's wrong, Miranda? Yuck! Isn't it obvious? Right here on my tray, fish sticks! <laughs> yeah, fish sticks Fridays. Isn't it great? It is not right, Scott. The fish are my subjects. This is clearly the work of... Dear people. Uh, um, uh... Air people? Yes, do you not know the air people? The Merfolks must have hated rivals. Don't you read the news? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, because I, I totally know how to read. What? Well, I must insist that you cease eating those fish sticks immediately. This is high treason. Oh. oh, well, but I've been looking forward to fish stick Friday since, since last fish stick Friday. Are you sure I can't eat any? He's asking Miranda while holding a fish stick really close to his mouth, but you feel like you've got a better answer to settle this argument. You blurt it out. Haven't you heard, Scott? Fish sticks make you worse at spots. They contain baldropinol ball and no doflavin. Fish sticks contain absolutely no fish. It's all garden snails and food grade plastic. Scott can eat as many as he wants. She wants him to stop, so we'll do this one. Gah! Oh no, not nerd of flavoring and ball dropping all. These are two of the worst ones. Do the air people want me to be bad at sports? <laughs> of course they do, Scott. The air people hate sports and sportsmen, but it's one of the most it's one of the most loathsome things about them. Aside from their feathers and their socialism. Oh well then, I'm not gonna eat any more fish sticks ever again. Fish stick Friday, more like fish stick. Fish stick. Bye, day. Yeah, man, I'll go tell the rest of the wolf pack about this. Scott runs off to spread anti air people propaganda, and Miranda gives you a most regal smile. The Let's second one this. is true, but the first one is, is what she'd like, yes. Okay, so we need to up. Um, charm and creativity we are not creative at all so let's go get creative that day while rehearsing for the class play it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you figurative oral sex your performance is intense and inspiring it will be remembered for generations which is pretty rad by high school play standards you gain two creativity later you see damien and miranda chatting and being a nosy little bitch Oh, sorry, chatting and being a nosy little bitch, you decide to insert yourself into the conversation. I should probably read these before I start saying them, huh? I look forward to this adventure, so is there anything more wonderful than getting insight into the lives of commoners? She's dressed as Daisy from, from, from the Marios. You better not pull that shit the whole time. My dad's the lords of hell, you know. <coughs> <coughs> Technically, I'm royalty too. I use them. Damien rolls his eyes and turns to you. Mrs. Panthera paired us up for a hands-on homework assignment going on an adventure. Apparently I have some anger issues and a thirst for violence that I should be challenge channeling into something productive. Like a thirst for violence isn't productive in and of itself. <laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. And I'm supposed to work on being more independent. Which is so strange since I told my ladies and gentlemen in waiting to fix that for me last week. I wonder what sort of adventure might give us the wonderful experience we need to fix our perceived but obviously non-existent flaws. <clears throat> Go on a deep sea quest to steal beautiful pearls from a scary kraken. Journey to a volcano to have a hot time at a fire method strip club. It's this one, right? Oh no! Hey, good call actually. Miranda's already familiar with the ocean so she can be a little more independent. I 
have absolutely no problems being independent. I know because I paid my servants to tell me that. You're the one who has the issues to be worked out, Damien, and an undersea adventure will be perfect. You can't fight fire with fire on the water. There's no fire. Fair enough. And I can channel my violence into something productive by killing the Kraken. Normally, I don't condone killing for killing's sake. But this isn't for the sake of killing. It's for the sake of getting me pearls. The two of them dash off, cackling gleefully. Hey, was the right option? Boom. They get full marks on their assignment and brag about this to anyone who will listen. Miranda has made the pearl the focal point of a choker and Damien looks dashing in his crack and tentacle hat. You gain a new appreciation for cephalopod themed headgear and you gain two smarts on one fun. Boom. <clears throat> We're doing well, guys. Let's do Ooh. this. We're doing it. Okay. Um, let's go be a bit more charming. Epic dodgeball match. Um, human interactions. Go for overkill and wink. Tell them mesmerize. Most epic wink. Nice. Win of people's hearts. Get charm. Nice. You see Miranda in her gym outfit in the far end of the gym swimming pool. Wait, the gym has a swimming pool? Why are you using it? Why are you always playing dodgeball? Why don't you get to see your classmates in swimsuits? 2019 Met Gala themes, cephalopods. <laughs> yeah, everyone would just turn up in a ball gown anyway, so what's the point? Anyway, as you approach Miranda, oh, as you approach Miranda, she shrieks and her merman bodyguards tackle you to the floor. <gasps> Who are you? Are you here to kill me? I'm just a better swimmer. This is no basis for an assassination. Wait, you don't swim? You have no fins and without gears, you'll just choke right away. Could you help me with this situation? I'm the best swimmer in school. My parents say this is just how it's supposed to be, but people sometimes get too jealous. I just clicked out of the window, good job me. My dad used to send such hoodlums to a farm. But now he says I'm not 11 anymore, so I have to learn to deal myself with the people who might plot my assassination. I have no idea who's even behind this. Can you help me catch these jealous people? Still sorry about the Met Gala, huh? Dude, it's such a wasted opportunity. Like, fucking come on. Put effort in, you bitches. And that's universal gender bitches. They're all just... Just dudes turning up in tuxes? Come on. Come on. Okay, how about a charity swim? You won't participate in whoever comes first gets a ticket to the farm? Quantity over quality. Mines. Loads of mines. The ones that make beeping noises with big chains and spikes. They're bound to catch someone or at least smear the message across the ceiling. How about... Because mm. she still stays on top. Wink. And everyone... <laughs> I feel like this is, but that's a, this is a creative solution. Guys, help me here. I am stuck. I need, I need your input, guys. I need healing and assistance. Oh, Stu. It's a sex thing. Which one, guys? Which one? Which one? Help, 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 help me. Top one sounds smart, but also creative. I get, yeah. It does. Sh let's go the top one. <gasps> there we go. <laughs> That is a delightful idea. We can make it a charity for selfs without a master. You know, just sad ones without someone to give orders to them. I think they call them free people. And I have a list of farms for my parents like this one. Rancho Relaxio, but with fire instead of relax. They are not very good at naming, but they are quite good at fire. Your idea worked, but we probably should have a talk about your pets. You get two funds and two smarts. And one smarts. 
which I apparently don't have because I can't fucking read. Let's do this! As usual, Miranda sits before her immaculate array of carefully arranged silverware. Damien, predictably, is examining her big... Her biggest knife? Oh. Wait. I read that wrong. Hmm. Never mind. <clears throat> so, uh, this is the one for killing people, right? Uh, disgraceful. What? Good heavens, no. This is the butter dagger. It would be seeming unseeming... It would be unseemly to use it on meat. So what then? Am I supposed to use this scrawny looking knife to kill a dude? No, no, no. If you simply must kill someone mid meal, it is customary to use the fish knife. This is a merfolk caught silverware after all. That tiny thing? I might as well wait for my victim to die of old age. That is usually how it's done in my kingdom, yes? Is that all poison? This is ridiculous. Yo, you there. Which knife would you use to kill a guy? Don't say the fish knife. The fish knife. A spoon! What? You need blades to kill people? The fish knife. I said not to, but you said, Gah, I'll show you which knife is used for murder. Damien picks up the big scary knife he wanted to use in the first place and lunges at you. You pick up the fish knife. Yes, defend my honor. Make sure to hold this knife with pinky extended. What? How did you disarm me? I'm normally the best at stabbing. Fuck me. I guess the fish knife really is the best for murder after all, huh? One must never doubt the princess in matters of silverware, my dear. Miranda is so impressed with your prize in combat and silverware, she awards you her napkin as a token. Oh shit, y'all! Let's do this! Okay, the shop is at the gym. We do not want the shop. We're gonna go get some creativity. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you totally forget your lines. It's terrible. But you don't let that get you down. You start improvising all your lines. And it's marvelous. Somehow it enhances the path of the play in unexpected ways. And that's saying something, since half of your improvisation is a rap battle against your inner fears. You gain two creativity. What, what? <clears throat> You're gazing dreamily at Miranda when a flash of otherworldly light blinds you. Oh no, it's this guy. When your vision clears, you see a great rift has opened in time and space. And standing in the middle of it... Greetings, my love. It's me, Prince of the other world, and I am here to fulfill an ancient prophecy. How majestic. A prophecy? How exciting and regal. What sort of prophecy is it? It's a prophecy of love. Oh boy, here it comes. Legends foretell a great beauty with the hair of an angel and the scales of a fish. A beauty who I am destined to marry. He's turned into William Shanna. <gasps> but... But that sounds like a perfect description of me. Could it be that I am the great beauty described in the prophecy? Well, yes. That's sort of what I was trying to imply. Now come with me to my realm, where we may plan a magnificent wedding. You can't let him get away with this, but that prophecy is hard to argue with. The only argument you can think of is... The hair of an angel? <laughs> Clearly Miranda has the hair of a goddess. What about this fish scales I glued to this handful of angel hair pasta? Well, she likes to be flattered because she's, uh, she's, you know, she's all about that regal life. So I'm going to go top one. And yes, I was about to go to the shop again accidentally. Don't at me. You don't know me. I just clicked out the fucking window again. Pasta? We have a vote for pasta in chat. See, pasta is like the smart one. She does like smart. But she was very, very flattered that that description described her. So flattery tends to work with her. Yeah. 
I, yeah, I want it to be the second one, but I, I'm going to go this for top one. It's true. The very air you now look upon was stolen and grafted from the scalp of Thetis, Thetis herself. Daddy really does insist on the best air for all his children, even if it angers the gods. Ah, well, perhaps the prophecy was speaking metaphorically. And yet, technicalities are the very things these sorts of prophecies turn upon. Oh, alas. Would that I could find a princess with less perfect hair. The prince flees, flees through his portal to go trolling for more princesses. As Miranda glows with pride, you gain two smarts, one charm, and the phone number of her hairstylist. Nope. Let's do this! Okay. <clears throat> Let's go be charming. Epi dodgeball. Um, the match is so intense and both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes. By betting a part of your charm against part of the other team leader's charm. That commitment amazes your whole team and their spirit is fueled by determination. Finally, you win and take two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. Afterwards, Miranda summons you. Oh, shit. It feels weird to be summoned, but you comply. You can't resist her merman goons. Greetings, fellow classmate. Thank you for coming, my dear. I have finally decided to trust you with my most important aspiration. I am destined to be the queen of prom. The royal ascension is nigh. We must prepare. Most of my competition is naive. They foolishly assume that Prom Queen is a purely ceremonial title. Except Ursula Jr. She's proving to be quite a worthy rival. I respect that. Which is why we must destroy her reputation immediately. Any thoughts? Let's convince everyone that she likes humans. Fart joke. It's this one. It doesn't take much to make someone look bad in this day and age. You, however, are monsters and went for a total overkill. You hire a Chinese hacker to plant 10 years of pro bono work rescuing human babies from lawn mowers in Ursula's name. At recess, Dr. Baby Love of the Baby Love Institute appears out of nowhere and presents her with a humanity award. <gasps> yes, this was seriously Hammer standing with the evil lawn mower creature contingent. That's an importing voting block. They're the ones who keep the schoolyard so tidy. You gain two boldness and one smarts. What the fuck was that? <clears throat> Let's do this! Okay. You notice Liam looking disgruntled, which is his default, so whatever. But it seems like Miranda is pretty upset too. Better check it out. Liam, why are you typing on your phone so angrily? Did your phone offend you in some way? Why are you mad at it? You seem to be an 8.5 on the frowny Liam scale. The what? The frowny Liam scale. Normally, I can tell pe how people are feeling from their faces, but you seem to be frowning most of the time, so I created a chart to measure your frowniness. Miranda pulls out a, a, a notepad and displays a series of doodles of Liam's frowniness. They're not super accurate, but they are super adorable. I'm not angry at my phone. My so-called frowniness is caused by a heinous error. I specifically asked that my creative creme brulee be extra crispy so, I did, so it truly popped with my hashtag massacre Instagram filter. Instead, they burnt it to a crisp, rendering it unphotographable. For unphotographable. Hey, Lord Blizzard, welcome in, welcome, welcome. Monsters deserve to know what they are getting into if they choose to eat at this cafeteria, so they can choose to take their business to a different establishment. And so I am writing a scathing Yelp review. Liam, you can't do that if they shut the cafeteria down, the school kitchen staff will lose their jobs. Did you know that peasants have to do labor to make living wages? They don't simply have an unlimited stores of gold. I was shocked when I first found out. Of course you were. If the kitchen staff have wanted to earn their wages, they would have been better at their jobs. I am simply the merchant of truth. No, you're the merchant of poop! 
your royal sophistication shines through. Look, ask Amira. Her taste may tend towards the mainstream, but surely she can see the subpar cafeteria must be exposed. Oops. Don't be ridiculous. Amira is surely more compassionate than that, and I would gladly help me save the cafeteria again. Uh, again? Gosh, it's hard to keep track of your misadventures at the shit show of a school. Still, you'll help if you can. Miranda can't undermine Liam's admittedly talented criticism alone. This will take an army of homeless people we pay to write positive Yelp reviews of the cafeteria until we eclipse Liam's. This is the shot. Liam, one lone voice, simply cannot shut down this cafeteria. At least not the, vo the, at least not the voice of a high schooler. Let's get a renowned food critic to write a Pulitzer-worthy expose to be published in the most widely read periodicals. It's the top one. Why, of course. <laughs> oh, shit. Thank you for that, Sub Englander. What? what? Morticia, that's French. Oui, mon sauvage. Um, thank you so, so much for that, Sub. Can I get some hearts for Englander, please? I'm going to put some in chat. Ba -ba -da. Boom. Get some hearts for Englander, please. Why, of course, this plan involves two of my most favorite strategies, gathering an army and outsourcing work to the disenfranchised. If it involved torture and suppression of dissidents, it would hit all my favorites, but there might still be time for that later. Oh my god, I love her. She's terrible. I don't even have a response to this. You go to the vast homeless population who wander the woods near the school. Don't ask. And convince them the cafeteria is a trendy, trendy new restaurant that sells food for the most valuable currency of all. Positive Yelp reviews. Turns out people are pretty gullible when they're starving, so they flock to the cafeteria in droves and start writing spectacular reviews on their phones. Because now homeless people have their phones on their own? It seems they all kept all... <clears throat> it seems they kept all they wanted blackberries. Remember blackberries? Yeah, me neither. Miranda Vanderbilt, says the principal giant spider, bursting into the cafeteria with eight-legged panache. Stop bringing droves of homeless people into our cafeteria. But, uh, principal giant spider, it was absolutely vital to the vitality of this school. You said that the last five times. You can't solve all your problems by manipulating homeless people. Notorious PGS storms out, but Miranda looks perfectly chipper. Oh, he may pretend to be upset, but I think the subtext was pretty clear. Thank you, Miranda and Demira, for saving the entire school like the beautiful heroes you are. That's 100% a lie, but Miranda called you beautiful. Oh, it's a win. Look, Let's I have a type. This. Stop eyeing me. Okay, so uh, auditorium is where the shop is. So let's go get some... Let's go get more charm. The Dane Epic Dodgeball match. Many people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you valiantly go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiations for a truce. After hours of intense diplomacy, you commit to an agreement. What an ex unexpected twist. You gain 10 righteousness, but this game is so wrong in so many ways that you would be lucky if you could do anything with that. And plus two charm. You're minding your own business when Miranda comes rushing up to you, clearly distraught. Most terrible news, friend. I have just watched the documentary Game of Thrones, and now I fear for my whole royal family. I did not realize how susceptible we might be to random acts of treachery, or how often we romance our siblings. <sighs> I don't want to be shot in the chest by a crossbow when City goes to the toilet. That doesn't sound proper at all. Please, help me put my poor mind at ease. How can I possibly identify potential traitors in my court? Just keep an eye out for the classic signs. Shifty eyes, hooded black cloaks, ordering knives in bulk. Pretty much everybody is a traitor. Just spin a bottle and whoever it points at, kill them. Oh no! Oh no, which one? I don't know which one to choose. I think the top one? I don't know. Number one, we have votes for number one. Yeah, let's go top. A 
What's that word mean? <gasps> uh, disgraceful. Could Lord Darkheart Stabbington be a traitor? I must warn Farah at once. We have to find a new royal babysitter. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet, unless that name is Darkheart Stabbington. You gain two smarts and one money as a reward. Dark Heart Stabbington. Bien sûr. Let's do this! Okay, so let's go get some creativity. Yay! Winku. <laughs> that day while rehearsing for the class play, you can't help but feel like you're not as good as the role requires you to be. There doesn't seem to be any ordinary way of getting yourself there, but there might be an extraordinary way. You summon the devil, one of many, and make a deal to enhance your creativity just a bit. You gain two creativ- You gain two creativity. You also lose three years of your life as you end the d Oh my god. You also lose three years of life as your end of the deal, but who cares? They weren't happening in-game anyway. Somebody puts a sack over your head and throws you in a car. You drive for hours before they let you out and take the sack off. It's clearly the first floor restroom. Miranda is sitting on a makeshift throne while her goons jump in and pile out of the toilet. Jump in and out of the toilet even. Wow, I cannot read today. Bleh. Greetings and salutations. I'm glad you came. My prom queen campaign is moving on to the next stage. Your expertise is crucial for this part. Most of my inner circle are fish. Only a full and less genetically engineered beyond recognition. Speaking of which, I need you to help me sneak a three meter tall, heavily armored cod assassin named Tresca into the school. No reason, uh, but if you're friends with that singing owl at Ariel, you best say your goodbyes. Oh, shit! <laughs> yes, Miranda. Uh, do nothing? Every student at our school is some kind of bizarre monster. We need a diversion. Release the Kraken. Um. A diversion? Release the Kraken? On the agenda, straight up murder. <clears throat> Let's do this one. Uh oh. Fish hit drums and the menacing beat culminates in a synchronous crescendo. You feel a thump from down below. And then a whimper. Oh, great. The Kraken is stuck in the sewers again. Take the plunger and up the seven ton monster out. You hurt an octopuppy. How could you? You lose two charm and one fun. No! Let's do this! As you approach Scott and Miranda's table, you see that the entire table is covered in exotic silverware. Oh, uh, what's this one for? That's the forking spoon. It's a spoon for picking up your forks so that you don't have to touch them with your fingers. And that one? That's the tuning fork. It's for making sure all your other silverware is tuned to A minor as is proper. What about this one? That's the terry knife. It's for milk. Where? Do people ever invent new silverwares? All the time, but none of them are ever any good. Are ever any good. It would take a genius of true subtlety to improve on the existing canon. A genius of true subtlety? Genius and subtlety are your middle fucking names. You suggest the ultimate new silverware. The salad harp. Hands. The fuck is the salad harp? I want this one. It sounds fabulous. A harp for salad? Why has no one thought of this before? Because it's hard to eat salad with an harp. Cretin, you said anything about eating. Isn't that what silverware's for? Perish the thought. The true purpose of silverware is to give your hands something to do while you elegantly avoid your food. And nothing is more elegant than playing a subtle lament on an harp while your serfs eat your salad for you. My serfs will finish my lunch for me. I am off to have a harp commissioned. Miranda takes you harp shopping with her. It's a real bonding experience. Afterwards, you both ignore a salad together at a fancy restaurant. Aw, oh, shit, yeah, boys. We in. We in. Let's do this! Um... Let's do 
let's go be let's go get some smart we're already really fucking smart um we we'll have to go play sports again that day an epic dodgeball match takes place amidst the value spot fellow player this seems utterly discouraged she thinks she's not worth anything at dodgeball and she attempts to throw a ball at herself you explain to her the many ways you think she's unique and wonderful while also defending the many pleasures in life with your help, she's capable of finding reasons to keep playing and gains a sense of self-worth. You gain one BFF, sadly she's not bad, this game so that beautiful friendship will take place off screen, and two charm. You catch Miranda monologuing about her problems to no one. She often does this. It's like she's accustomed to having a royal scribe following her everywhere she goes. <laughs> oh, whatever shall I do about my army? We haven't had a proper war in months, and the soldiers are becoming ever so anxious. I've tried sending the servants to give them tummy rubs and even putting extra leaves and sticks in their cages. Why they just kill the servants with the sticks? Hmm? I never thought managing an entire branch of the military would be so challenging. How can I possibly keep my soldiers entertained? Divide them in half and make them fight a practice war. A thousand piñatas. I genuinely need help, chat, because I, every time I go off on my own and I pick one, it's wrong. Also, I fucking sunburnt my arm today. Oh no. I got sunburnt today, guys. I have a farmer's tan. This is a disaster. One. One. Okay, we have votes for one. If this is wrong, it's chat's fault. Well, it's not, it's, yeah, it's a, that's that's bad. Oops, it's just a fucking line. I yes, a healthy live fire scrimmage. I should have no trouble organizing such a thing. My lieutenants inform me that the soldiers that that ugh, that the soldiers bloody hate each other. And as an extra bonus, anyone who dies during the practice war will be guaranteed not to die in a real war. That ought to reduce war casualties significantly. It is as Favre always says, any problem can be solved by dividing people into groups and making them kill each other. Isn't that right, Jason? I never understood it up until now, but these are such wise words. Miranda skips off to organize her little bloodbath. You gain two boldness and one smart. Let's do this! Now, did you know you had that, that one D&D character who, you know, was, was in a platoon that was literally decimated? Um, I don't know. It just seemed like a thing to say. I'm sorry, I take it back. <laughs> okay, let's go get Charmin. Dan, epic dodge ball match, I plays. At one point, you're about to be eliminated by a player from the other team. But suddenly you convince him not to throw the ball at you with a heartfelt speech about the importance of everyone's lives. The player bursts into tears and you take an advantage and you take advantage of that moment of weakness, throwing a ball at him. Uh, decimation is killing a tenth, I believe. You, you lose minus five mercy, a stat that might be useful in Monster Prom sequel, but isn't now, and you gain two charm. Miranda, oblivious to everything that's happened, approaches you, weeping. Uh, disgraceful. Have you seen this news? Some most dreadful thing has happened. The Lemurian monarchy has been overthrown. King Kraken no longer sits upon the throne of golden baby skulls. Those filthy revolutionaries are saying he stole their daughters and ate their sons and forced everyone to work for free in the uranium mines. So he made a few shrewd financial decisions. That's no reason to depose him. If Samin isn't the kidnapping and slave labor was enough to get the peasants in an uproar, I shudder to think of my own kingdom. Do you think my people might resent being forced to hold up the corner of the palace when the foundation is crumbling? Do you think the 100% income tax and the random cannonballs we fire into the villages might be taken as something other than expressions of goodwill. Could this plague of civil unrest infect my own domain? Oh, perish the thought. 
I am inconsolable. Console me. How might I safeguard my kingdom against the fate of, of good King Kraken? Duh. Replace all your subjects with mindless robots. I built a robot army a few months ago, and I still have the plans. Give all your subjects belly rubs. Fishers love belly rubs. One. I feel like one. Yeah. One. 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 <gasps> this is fantastic! An army of good little robots to replace those pesky serfs. I bet they won't come. Nope, not a V like that. That's not how the French speak. I guess they will. I, <clears throat> I bet they won't complain when we don't feed them for two weeks because we're having a party. And we'll finally be free to grind all our subjects up into paste and sell them as dolphin saved tuna like we've always wanted. <gasps> Thank you. Shiny you have truly done a good deed today. You have serious doubts as to the actual goodness of your deed. But hey, that's why you drink. You gain two creativity and one money from tuna sales. Let's do this! So hey, this is uh, taking a turn. Oh, Vera. Oh, Vera. You arrive at your chosen table to find Vera looking askance at Miranda's lunch. A single, very suspicious looking apple. Miranda, honey, your apple seems to be pulsing with unhealthy purple light. Oh, I'm sure it is just your imagination. Ugh. It also has a skull on it, and it smells like lighter fluid. I don't think it's for eating. Of course it's for eating. It's a perfectly standard poison apple. You know, the sort that gets put a that puts a princess to sleep for a hundred years? You literally just admitted it's poison. I know, I know, and... Oh, no. Mm -hmm, I know, I know. And I always said I wouldn't be the kind of princess who eats a poisoned apple. But how else will I find a prince to wake me with true love's kiss and live happily ever after with me? Go. We need to have a little talk about feminism. You back me up on this. Tell her she doesn't need to poison herself for the sake of a man. You don't need to eat that apple. Princes should be eating poisoned apples to tell so that you'll kiss them. You don't need to eat that apple. There are plenty of eligible princes on hotprincefinder.com. It's this top one. That's the flattery one, right? A marvelous idea. If the princes are asleep, I shall be able to assess them fully before making a selection. Come to think of it, I suppose this is why the princes prefer sleeping damsels to begin with. God, royal marriages. The whole thing is like a fucking meat market. In my kingdom, it's more of a fish market. In any case, you two have truly opened my eyes. I shall be sending poisoned apples to all nearby princes forthwith. Miranda gets to work poisoning all her suitors. Vera is very impressed with your enlightened opinions on gender and poison. I know, I realized that one was for Vera, but she seemed happy with it, though it didn't offend her. Let's do this! Okay, so we can't go get some charm, so let's go get some creativity. That day while rehearsing for the class play, you aren't especially good nor inspired. For once, it seems you aren't getting the classic creativity boost from the auditorium. But afterwards, while talking to your classmates, you're having trouble conveying your point in a discussion. So you decide to convey it through music. You start singing and suddenly everyone else joins you in a kick-ass musical number. It's so amazing that the people with whom you were arguing totally get your point and change their minds once the song is over. You gain two creativity. You catch Miranda posing in front of a mirror, gazing dreamily at her reflection. Oh, how I would love to win the talent show. Of course, Daddy pays a dozen persons to tell me how talented I am every morning, but that's not the same. After all, the peasants. No, to hold that heavy spiky trophy in my hands, or rather, to have my servants hold it. Oh, that would make me the happiest princess in all the land. But I'm so nervous. What if they don't like my song? 
What if my skin is too scaly? What if I accidentally say a swear? Okay, Miranda, be calm. Remember what Daddy says. If you don't calm down, failure is 100% assured. That's not helping. Now I'm even less calm. Looks like Miranda is caught in a vicious cycle. Quick, help her out before she worries herself to death. Don't worry about those chumps in the audience. If they don't love you, then they're untalented at recognizing talent. I know a great trick for beating stage fright. Just picture everyone naked. It's gotta be the top one, right? Because the problem is always someone else. The problem is not Miranda. So this one. Oh my, what a marvelously kind thing to say. You are right, of course. How silly of me to doubt it. It is as daddy says. Was, uh, no, wow, I went so Yorkshire then. <laughs> other aristocrats are simply better than other people. You are quite perceptive for a commoner. And you know, if I don't do well in the talent show, I suppose that's all right. Daddy can always have the judges executed for her impudence. You're always glad you're not judging the talent show. Sorry, you're glad you're not judging the talent show this year. You gain two smarts and one charm. Oh, we're so charming, you guys. We're so charming. <laughs> let's do this. Good lord. Okay, let's let's get some let's get some dollar we dudes. You're right, Lord Lord Blizzard. You are right. Let's get some dollars. That day, you spend some time on the library's PCs, managing your start kicker. You deceive lots of people with a sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice. You gain ten, no, a hundred thousand money, but almost everything goes. Yes, yeah, a hundred thousand, right? Yeah, but almost everything goes to cover costs, and you keep only two money. Dang it. You notice Polly bent over her phone while Miranda tries to peek over her shoulder. Something really interesting must be going on on Polly's phone. When you get closer, though, you see that Polly's just on Tinder again, swiping right on everybody. Miranda seems entranced, though, and a little worried. What? What did you say this was called again? Tinder. <gasps> and it's an app for finding true love? Ah! <laughs> sure. Oh, how majestic. But, but I never knew. I have spent countless hours going to royal balls and kissing frogs and pretending to be in a magical slumber huh. when I could simply have been using this app. I mostly just use it for collecting dick pics. What are these uh, dick pics? Tokens of affection? Oh, alas, to be so far behind in my quest for love. I am 19 years old, practically an old maid, and only now learning of this? Oh, how will I ever make up for lost time? Don't worry, I'll coach you in the mysterious ways of Tinder. You'll have a whole harem in no time. You still don't have Tinder? Why should you worry about... Why should you worry having Tinder when you can actually own Tinder? Why don't you just buy the entire company? Oh, oh, guys, which one? Which one? I'm not sure. Cast your votes now. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, two. Uh, one, one. That's two votes for one. One vote for two. One. Okay. Oh, a arum. My uncle Octavius bought me a arum when I was 15 years old. I never saw the appeal. Speaking of which, I wonder if anyone has been feeding the concubines. But in any case, it is not an arum I am seeking, but a soulmate. Someone to sweep me off my feet and carry me away from a gleaming white horse. And also rescue me if I ever get put into a magical slumber or trapped in a thong of a castle or abducted by a dragon or cornered by the Duke of Maria Marianas at a cocktail party. You're not worthy. Alas, it seems as if I will have to accomplish my goals by myself. Brr. Too bad, you lose two boldness and one fun, but you do wonder if there's any way you can get invited to that harem. Okay. 
resources. Let's do this! Oh, who is this? Anyway, uh, we're going to Miranda. He walks over to Miranda and Scott's table to find them peering suspiciously into a burger. Secret sauce. Secret sauce. What red mysteries do you conceal? Uh, whoa, do you think the secret sauce can talk? Cool! Hey, secret sauce, what are you made out of? No, Scott, my question was rhetorical. Awesome, mine was loud. Oh, it's no use. We will never discern the active ingredient of this delicious secret sauce. Unless you have an idea, Amira. The blood of your father's enemies, Miranda, that's why it's so delicious. You're overthinking this, Scott. It's a sauce made of secrets. Let's tell one. <gasps> blood of their people. I didn't know the high school cafeteria cared about my family's ancient rivalry. And everyone knows the air people bleed candy syrup and barbecue sauce. I should have known. You know? I don't normally eat food myself. I have serfs for that, but I may have to make an exception. Oh, more blood. But I eat blood all the time. Like, pretty much every full moon. Scott's a little disappointed, but you don't care. You're busy sharing a saucy burger with Miranda. Let's do this! Okay, let's go get charming. That was the most interesting character being human, the Slayer. Oh, cool. Happy dodgeball match. Miss the Bowie spot. Yep, blah, blah, blah. She throws a ball at herself. Got one BFF. I'm more charm. You run into Miranda accidentally. It's clumsy, yet kind of cute and romantic. For a second, you suspect she rehearsed it. Hey, it's so funny running into you here. So random. Anyway, I've been wondering. I got my weekly allowance today, but I can't come up with anything fun to do. It's not much, just a million. But perhaps we could come up with something together? <laughs> something practical and yet amusing, a purge of your political opponents. I'd like to know more about you. Let's hire peasants to sing your story. This one, right? It's gotta be two, right? It's gotta be two, right? Gotta be. Has to be. Both of these are very good, though. One, because it sounds smart. Okay, so we have 22 smarts. And 19 charm. We've got higher smarts, I guess. And nine money. Let's go with number one. Second one sounds creative. It does. Smarts is higher. Yeah, all right. That's hard to do with a million, silly. Also, we can do a pair of John and I. We'll have to get creative. Unless homeless spies bash dissidents with sticks. Ah, let's do it all night with daggers while they sleep. Your first date and it's at night? Way to go! You gain two boldness and one smarts. Here goes. Here it goes. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. What? I'm sorry to tell you this, my friend. But I think your princess is in another castle. Ugh, disgusting. <laughs> oh, we're gonna be doomed to be forever alone. This failure haunted you the rest of your life and you never moved on becoming a total and constant failure. You never succeeded at anything ever again. 
Except for that time you went up Monsters Got Talent, but your talent was being a failure at love. It astonished everyone how bad you were at romance. Not any less sad, though. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! No! Six and nine events, though. Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, after months prom, blah blah blah, blah blah. Miranda used her vast surf knowledge to get a job at handpicking the best surfs for other people. Unsurprisingly, she ended up leaving her surfs to do the work. Excuse me. Mm. Damien loved to fire. Yeah, blah blah blah. blah. Right. Um, I'm gonna just BRB two seconds because I've been chugging a lot of water and I have to pee so fucking bad. So I'm gonna be back in a sec and then we'll do a short playthrough, uh, a half an hour one. So I'll be two seconds. Lol, I put it on the starting soon screen. I'm an idiot. What want? Okay. But do 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 not Let's do a shot one. Ah, spooky high school, blah blah. We shall play as Vicky. Because she's adorable. Yay. Uh, okay, quiz. Who are we going for this time, actually? Who, who are we going to go smooch? Should we give Vera? I'm going to give Vera another shot. You get the chance to produce a movie. It's based on something about superheroes, but with a love triangle between a beautiful yet somewhat relatable girl, maybe she's always st stating she's a mess, and two of the super hot superheroes, which are also like vampires or pirates or both. Isn't it? Hey, it's called vampires, isn't it? I'd, I'd fucking read it. The most influential Russian novelist of the. 
19th century. There we go. That took too much for me to fucking figure out with my brain. Good job, brain. Have gone nuts. They don't remember anything about last night, and now they can't find the manuscript of the brothers Karamazov and Dost oh, Dostoyevsky has to deliver it today. Hmm. Two cool guys walking away from red explosions. And they don't look at the explosions. They don't give a fuck about the explosions. They reflect on life and love. But it's super dope kickers because they do so walking away from never ending explosions. Um. Hmm. I'll choose this one because it's classy. Oh shit. Go back, go back, go back. Now oh, I wish I could go back. I pressed the wrong option. You build a hundred foot statue. Yep. Um. Ah, uh, that one's mean. We did that. What would be your first? Dr dr uh, what would be your dream first date? Well, party sweating. Uh, this one, the business advice. We didn't manage to smooch Miranda. She Let's wasn't. Go. She wasn't having it. Okay, we need money. That day you spent some time in the library's PCs, mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain two bitcoins, which is equal to two million dollars. Which unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars, so two money. You spy Vera and Liam engaged in their favourite pastime, a variation of people watching called monster judging. So pathetic. Oh, do you see what she's wearing? Newsflash, lime green stripper boots do not go with a chupacabra fur. At least she made a choice. I've already seen six people wearing the same air gog and sneakers. We really are the lucky ones, Liam. Most people are just absolutely hideous. But even their hideousness is mediocre. Most people are hideous, but I have yet to see one who is the most hideous. I wonder what such an abomination would even look like. True hideousness is on the inside, in your organs. A person with their organs on their outside would be the most hideous. A toned body, symmetrical face, nice features, because traditional beauty standards are hideously mainstream. That's Liam. I don't feel like there's a winning option here. <laughs> Help! Help! Because she's got a tone body, symmetrical face, and nice features, so I'm gonna go top one. <laughs> yes. I've always said that a person's insides could be even worse than their shell. A passing hermit crab dragon hybrid glares at her, but Vera doesn't seem to care. I mean, unkempt eyebrows are gross enough, but an unkempt esophagus. <laughs> the mind reels. I will admit, as repulsive as I find most people, it would be hard for me to ignore an exposed circulatory system. And there is nothing more hideous than being drawn to repulsive people just because you're thirsty. Mm, I can relate. I seem poorly drawn to some pretty repulsive lowlives herself when she's thirsty. Of course, that's a different kind of thirst, but the principle certainly holds. Ah, the innocent joy of bonding over mutual derision of the appearances of others. You gain two fun and one creativity. Let's go! I lost to them for a second and I panicked. You arrive at Polly and Vera's table to find them eating. Wait, both of them? Oh, yum yum. I sure do love food and eating. Look at this food go in me. Mmm, yes, this cafeteria is Loppy Joe. It truly has a subtle flavor profile. Finally, you notice the cause of this absurdity. A well-dressed businessman sitting at the next table watching both women intently. Oh yeah, I know you'll like this, baby. My eating is realistic and erotic. Be cool, Polly. 
The man wants to pay us for eating in front of him, not screaming about eating. Is this not what eating is? I forget. While Vera tries to explain eating to Polly, the businessman shyly approaches you and gives a small bow. Much obliged, friend, he says in a soft voice. Are these two fine ladies your friends? I must confess that I have searched far and wide for a suitable candidate to fulfill my rather unusual fetish. Oh, boy. Paying a student at a high school for monsters to eat food while I watch politely from a distance. But I find myself unable to choose which of these two beauties to hire. The snake-headed one possesses a certain grace. It's my name. <laughs> yeah, pay me, motherfucker. Pay me to do a thing I was going to do anyway. She... <laughs> Possess this grace. Oh. But the translucent one has such passion. I don't even want the money. This is just fucking weird and I love it. In your opinion, the businessman finishes, which one would be the wiser choice on my part? The Gorgon, obviously. Look how many mouths she's got on her head. The ghost, for sure. I've never seen someone eat so convincingly. I saw the top one, yes, obviously, Vera. I mean, come on. The businessman strokes his chin and nods. Hmm, you have a point, he says. The ghost only has the one mouth. Also, food seems to go right through her. This gorgon, meanwhile, has countless mouths. Such value. Value is right, Purvo. A thousand in cash, up front. You pay for all my meals, and you give me your pants. Holy shit, he's doing it! He's doing it! He's getting naked! Vera is able to convince the businessman to pay for a fancy dinner for you and her. It's a little creepy with him watching the two of you, but you get over it. Oh my god, I love Vera so much. Let's go. Uh, we need to be smart. That day you listen to your elders and learn valuable lessons. Sometimes, after all the monster nonsense and the dating gimmicks, you forget that attending class is supposed to be the primary activity at this high school. You gain two smarts. Afterwards, you discover that you've been poisoned, and only Vera has the antidote. She does this all the time. It's how she invites you to hang out. Hey there. There you are. And thank you so much for coming. I'm embarking on a new criminal enterprise, and I need a consigliere. The idea is simple, yet brilliant. Think Uber, but for killing people. I call it murder. But it turns out the market is flooded with assassination apps. Assassination apps and blood. I need a way to get ahead of the pack, and since you're such a good advisor... Differenti differentiate yourself by being the only service that offers free-range organic murders. Viral marketing, literally. Tailor a highly contagious virus to make people love murder. Oh, shit. Um... <clears throat> Two? I think two. Let's do two. <clears throat> you can do that. Great. You can use my private chemical weapons laboratory. And so, this is working better than I ever could have imagined. Demand for murder has gone through the roof since you released that virus. Sure, the side effects include vomiting, bloody tears, male lactation, cobra feet, time dilation, Rigor mortis, rectal teeth, renegade spleen, microaggressions, sudden tattoos, hair trauma, liquefaction, and coughing. But it's worth, worth, the, worth it for the profits I'm raking in. Plus, I'm making a literal killing, selling people the antidote for all those side effects. It's not actually an antidote, though. It's actually just heroin. Same difference. <clears throat> Did you know they used to give heroin to babies as a cough suppressant? I did. Yeah, the real world is exactly as amoral as this video game. But whatever, you gain two creativity and one money. They also include opium, alcohol, let's go, and morphine. Okay, um, we need to be smart, so let's get smart. That day you're astonished by the new stuff you learn in class. You thought high school was all about doing stupid shit with your friends and trying to find true love. Who would have thought that class could actually be useful? 
What a nice surprise. You gain one valuable lesson. Good luck trying to use that in this game. And two smarts. You see Vera looking at her phone. She's obviously pissed, so you decide to go talk to her. Ugh. Ugh, not another dick pic. I mean, I know that's what you've got to expect when you look as stunning as I do all the time, but still, not fond of dick pics. Not at all. Hey, uh, newsflash for the fellas out there, most ladies? Not into dick pics, so don't. Especially unsolicited. Ask first. Oh, I think guy is going to learn. Dicks look gross. Sending me a picture of your dick is not a treat for me. I'm not going to frame it and put it on my wall. I'm going to put it in a folder called Sad Losers and then delete the folder. And then I'll probably set the phone on fire, just in case. Hey, you're pretty unpleasant, right? Help me figure out what to say to this guy so he'll stop sending- stop trying to make me look at his wiener. Go for the burn! Sorry, but I'm having a hard time seeing anything. Does your phone have a zoom function? Or maybe a microscope attachment? Destroy his life. Photoshop all the pics into a silly looking monster. Make it the star of a weird kid show and make millions with it. You make a joke out of him, become rich, and you own the copyrights to his dick. That's the winner. Yes, you did. You used to be able to buy cocaine at Fortnum and Mason and other like apothe apothecaries and stuff. You'd just be like, hey, can I have a pound of cocaine? And they'd be like, yes. No, they wouldn't, but, you know. Hmm. Right. Sweet. Either he stops, or he makes me richer with every dick pic he sends to me. It's a win-win situation. <laughs> or should I say a, a win-weener situation? Oh, she owed your less. Hmm. Duck pics, however, very welcome. Yes, Tesco, you are right. Duck pics. Okay, I'm not the funny type, for sure, so I might need your help down the road for this to really take off. You'll be my assistant executive producer or whatever fancy title you want. Damn, you're funny and have a sharp business mind. That's surely sexier than a dick pic? Which wasn't exactly hard since his pics hadn't set very high standards, but, but still. Sweet move! You gain one fun and one smart. You also earn two money as an advance for your salary as assistant executive producer. Ten cocaines, please. Let's go! Where is she? There she be. You find Vera and Polly at their table. Deep in conversation. Alright, a business idea. People pay a monthly subscription to prevent me from drugging their food. <sighs> business idea? People pay me a monthly description to put drugs in their food. Hmm. Business idea. Price out the cafeteria's current food supplier by selling plastic food. <laughs> Business idea. Nipples. Just nipples. Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait. Business idea. We use clever marketing and food science to create the perfect new diet craze and sell it for an insane profit. <gasps> That's... Actually, a really good idea. Better than nipples? Yes. We just need to figure out what our new diet product will be. Tapeworms! They're gluten-free, dairy-free, 100% organic, and you can get them for free from sick cows. Meth! It's what's for lunch! It's the tapeworms. That has been quite pleasing. What a delicious idea. What? What if it for, like, ghosts and stuff? Ghosts will lose weight, too. We'll just sell ghosts of tapeworms alongside the living ones, naturally. Where are you gonna get tapeworm ghosts? <laughs> Simple. I'll just kill tapeworms with unfinished business, which is pretty much any tapeworm, honestly. They're very ambitious. Awesome, boo! Well, all of my objections to this plan are solved. Scam away! Soon, Vera's new slender friends are all the rage in the cafeteria, and she seems to tolerate your presence even more. And everybody's losing weight. I think she likes us. <laughs> Let's go. Oh god, we can't go to class because this, this lady's there. Um, let's get some money. Um, creativity. Let's try that. 
That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the music themselves is Remember for generations, to creativity, woo. Between class periods, you discover a severed horse head in your locker. It has a note in its mouth telling you to meet Vera ASAP. Oh god, I love her. Hey you. I'm so glad you've come. I have another crime problem which would benefit from your insight. Thanks to your input, a murder has cornered the market in app-based assassinations, and yet... The other crime lords don't take me seriously. Just because I'm not a 40-year-old man with a scary scar, those sexist morons think this is just a phase for me. Since when did having a killer body and flawless skin disqualify a girl from a life of crime? It's disgusting. How can I show... How, well, how can I show these chauvinist goons what crime really means to me? Come on, think of something. You're my most trusted advisor. Quick crime, they'll come crawling back once they see how bad it is without you. Write a song about it. I'll help. We're not creative enough for that, though. <sighs> Two. Yeah, because this will if she quits crime, she'll stop getting money and then she'll be mad at me. Song. Song. Okay. Very well. I've always fancied myself a pop star. Just without the singing. Basically, I've always just fancied myself fabulous. Well, chop chop. Get to work writing me a hit single that will, my sh that will show my true love of crime. One night, a frenzied songwriting later. I like. Big. Crimes and I cannot lie. You motherfuckers can't deny. When a girl walks in with a mask on her face yelling, put the money in the briefcase, you get it done. Because if you don't, I swear I will end all your lives. I fucking will. Don't test me. Wow, you're right. This song was a great idea. It even helped me rob this bank. The security footage of Vera's bank robbery becomes robbery becomes a number one hit single overnight. She becomes too popular to prosecute. The other crime lords are forced to accept her devotion to crime. Especially when she threatens a repeat performance of her single at every one of their safe houses. With all disagreements mended, everybody, everyone decides to have a gang war to celebrate. You gain two boldness and one fun. We did Let's it! Go. We did it! Let's get smart. Uh, that day, your teacher delivers an amazing and creative performance that blows all your minds. It ends up being a sensation on YouTube. Your teacher gains, two, gains 10 coolness, but who cares? He's not trying to romance your classmates. Or is he? We hope not. Oh, you also gain two smarts. Hooray! Ah, the sounds of learning. Chalk on a blackboard, pencils on paper, and ominous crash. It would seem that Damien and Vera have knocked over several desks in a rush to get to one particular seat. Listen, Snake for Brings, don't you dare even think about... <clears throat> Back off, Brimstone Breath. I will turn you to stone before you can snap your oddly well-manicured fingers. <sighs> that makes you think you're worthy of sitting in the ultimate cool seat. I could get more likes posting a picture of me flipping you off than you'd get on a full frontal nude. <laughs> Clearly, you'd never see my nudes. Ever heard of Demon Douchebag? Oh, sorry, let me try that again. Ever heard of Demon Douche Bros Texting dot com? Well then, if my sex are internet famous, I'm obviously the fucking coolest. Oh, you think being ridiculed on the internet makes you cooler than being on King Minos's list of the wealthiest human hybrids under 300 years old? <laughs> okay. This could go on forever. Better settle it. Better settle it for them. Just fucking take the seat for yourself before either of them can stop you. Call down an unholy storm of rhinoceri to obliterate the seat. It's this one, right? I'm gonna do this one. Just gonna do it. Just gonna do this one. You shove Damien and Vera out of the way and plop your butt down on the ultimate cool seat. You smirk gleefully at their admiration-filled, speechless stares. But that's not admiration. Admiration. That's horror. Your ass is smoking and not like your ass is smoking as in hot. Like, it is hot, but in the literal sense. It's on fire. Your butt is on fire. 
You leap out of the seat howling in pain as a glowing legend appears across the chair back. Whosoever is not, the Radis will totally get their athlet on fire if they sit here. Oh, well then, I guess that settles that. I mean, we may not know which of us is the absolute coolest, but we know who is absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, here, let me help you with that fire. Damien's help comes in the form of stomping the fire out, which would be helpful except the fire is you. You lose two fun and one boldness. Fun fact, Nate wants to battle on his fiance voice, Damien and Vera. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know Vera was his fiance. That's Let's cool. Go. Okay. As you approach the table, you see Vera delicately lifting a fork full of quinoa to her mouth. She brings lunch from home. When? Food, fork, six, eight. Who do we delicate? Deliciate. Eat egg. Eat egg. Yeah, eat egg. Ugh. Oh, Scott. What on earth are you doing? I'm cheerleading you to help you be the best eater in the whole school. What caused this obsession with cheerleading me, though, through mundane activities that require no cheerleading? <laughs> Everything requires cheerleading, silly. That's why we have cheerleaders for our cheerleaders. But I can see my cheerleading's not working. You haven't eaten anything yet. That's because you keep startling me with your damn cheerleading. I can't eat when I'm startled. Nah, that can't be it. I must not be cheerleading now enough. Hey, friend, maybe you can help me. You shouldn't be cheering for Vera to eat the food. You should be cheering for the food to get eaten by Vera in the walk-in freezer. The problem is obviously that we aren't dressed up as giant salad is this one. Oh, duh. It's like when we cheer for the other team to lose instead of cheering for our team to win. Yes, I invented that cheerleading strategy. It gives us a huge psychological edge against teams that hate losing. I'm gonna go try it right now. Those vegetables are gonna get so inspired. Scott runs off to the kitchen to inspire the vegetables. You can still hear his muffled shouting from the back, but it's not bad. That has been quite pleasing. Thanks. Now I can finally enjoy this, enjoy this quinoa and baby tea salad without unwanted encouragement. For the next week, all the cafeteria food seems extremely eager to get in your mouth. Cheerleading really works. Let's go. It's our last chance. Day of the first of class. She said, "Come on, she enjoyed talking to the teacher. He's a bit bitter, but in a cool way. He treats you like an adult, and the two of you discuss life and stuff in a very snarky way. Look at you, excelling at cliched movie tropes. You gain two smarts and one valuable life insight that will help you face the difficulties of being young. Your mind's barely on what you're doing, although you're really concerned about. That is a grammatical." That's not right. That's the wrong yaw, guys. Your mind barely binds barely on what you're doing, though. All you're really concerned about is your situation with Vera. Throughout her latest gang war, you've been her closest and most trusted advisor. Maybe too close. You're worried Vera's become so dependent on your advice she's blind to your true romantic intentions. If only you had the courage to tell her how you really feel. After all, you don't want to end up in the advisor zone. You're so lost in thoughts of unrequited love, you hardly notice Vera sneaking up on you. Maybe that's also because of the invisibility cloak you helped to pick out. Hi. There you are. I was just going to pick you up. We've got a date tonight. <laughs> a date? Then perhaps your affections aren't unrequited. With the hands of Monster City's major crime factions. To celebrate the end of the latest gang war. You're such a good and loyal advisor. I couldn't imagine going without you. Right, of course. Trying to hide your disappointment, you accompany Vera to the peace conference. But soon. You can have horse racing, but if you think I'm giving up murder's monopoly, you've got your head so far up your arse it's pumped back out your shirt collar. Larry, the actual crocodile, snaps his fangs. Gumbozo Gianetti of the deranged clown assembly honks in disapproval. Timmy, the knife baby, chews his rattle menacingly. All right, you scumbag, settle down. But it's too late. Larry the Croc unveils a wicked machine gun. Gumbozo makes a rocket launcher out of a twisted balloons, and Timmy the Knife Baby produces. I love knives. Hey, uh, advisor, a little help here. If you don't save Vera now, you'll never have a chance to confess your feelings. So you take a deep breath and. 
confess our feelings. Kiss Larry the Croc in his big crocodile mouth. Um. Uh, um. Uh. Uh, yeah. What? She'll probably tell us to fuck off if we confess our feelings, right? Right? I want to tell he'll leave me hanging here, guys. Two? I think two? Let's go two. Fuck it. If you're not going to get with Vera, you might as well get it on with a freaky crocodile, dude. You lock lips? What? What are you doing? Are you trying to bite his teeth off? Or are you? Oh. Oh, wow. Larry the Croc is even more surprised than Vera. He and the other crime lords drop their weapons in amazement, giving Vera the perfect opportunity to shoot them all with her own akimbo Uzis. <laughs> Love conquers all suckers. Now, wipe the blood and crocodile saliva off, Vicky. I'm taking you out to dinner. Oh, don't blush. I know you were just trying to make me jealous by making out with that dangerous crime reptile. But you know what? It totally worked. <laughs> with Vera as the new queen of crime in your city, anything is possible. She even gets you plastic surgery to cover up the croc bites. You gain two charm and one fun. Look at that face! Look at this smooch up. Okay, here goes. Hey there. Let's go. Here goes. Prom. You know what, my dear advisor? I think lately I'm focusing too much on all our crime adventures. It's nice to be rich and feared, but what's the point if I don't get to enjoy life from time to time? So I have the feeling prom night could be a great way to unwind. What do you advise me to do? <laughs> and then she... She wings at you! That's so rare that we don't even have her doing it because she has an eye cover. In the end, you and Vera have a lovely evening together. That will teach them. Followed by lots of thrilling crime adventures. Vera starts falling for you. She values how you respect her individuality and even support her career by being her trusted advisor. The two of you do a great job of juggling being partners in both love and crime, mostly because Vera's great at everything she does, also she reminds you constantly. Also she reminds you that the two of you may be partners in love, but in crime you're still superior and advisor. But that's Vera for you. And under all that ferocious confidence, you can also you can also perceive a deep respect for you. So beautiful. Crime is always the answer. We smooch Vera! We smooth Vera, we smooth Vera, I can die happy now. Boom! Most likely to be tasty if eaten by other people is me. Vera's quote, you will all hear from my lawyers. Ah, we smooth Vera, I'm so happy. Okay. KO. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After Monster Prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning who we were and who we could be. And you know what? As it always does, life happened. And it was wonderful. I want to know who this guy is. Vera kept being fierce, strong, and stunning. Some haters once said adult life would put that mean bitch in her place. But you know what? Vera ended up making adult life her little bitch. Scott became an athlete. Not so long ago, he won a prestigious national award for being the best at doing sports. Liam kept doing art so hard that he eventually evaporated and became the concept of coolness itself. While leaving the physical plane, the last thing Liam did was give everyone a condescending look. During three, those three weeks, Monster Prom seemed bigger than life. And then it was gone, just like that. The battle for Monster Prom Night might have ended then, but there were lots of battles left in that war we called youth. 
But once again, we were young and unafraid and we were ready to start. Plus, there's every character on the end picture but coach and the wolves can be dated. <gasps> Naughty. Good job. Everyone in, who made this game, excellent job. Excellent job. This game's fucking great. Hey, Slenderman. How's it going, bud? Hey, Jesse Cox was a producer? Dope. Um, yeah, so I am going to end stream here for tonight because uh, it would put us well over the usual time um, to do another run, even a short one. Also, my poor throat. I need to like get some throat stuff for these streams because I love doing these these uh, dating sim streams and doing dumb voices. So I am going to uh, to bounce, but I hope you all have a wonderful uh, evening or night wherever you are or even morning. And I will see you tomorrow for some D&D &D where I will be DMing at Bike Club is back. So um, tune in tomorrow, 8 p.m. If you want to see me DM a bunch of miscreants and misfits, I think it's about to kick off. I think we're, we're about to have an event. So we will see what happens tomorrow, but uh, I will see you then. Stay beautiful, babies.